Hello YouTube friends, welcome to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and today I'm going to talk to you all about English paper piecing. Now on the end card I will leave the playlist to this particular project but I've hung Agnes's quilt up behind me, uh, this hexagon quilt that I've been working on. Agnes is just about to be three, she's my granddaughter and I started working on this quilt before she was born. That's fine though, it's a, a single bed quilt so she doesn't need it for ages yet. So the last time we saw this project I was doing a very uh, beginner's guide to how to piece hexagons together and so I made these sample pieces. I made two, a green one and a blue one because I want to practice the quilting stitches that I'm going to use on this quilt before I start the big piece and I thought I would make two sample pieces which I'm going to turn into cushions. Now that last video in this series was a very much a beginner's guide to basically piecing together hexagons. All the, um, the, the tips about the papers and the basting and all of that. Today I want to talk to you about how to deal with edges to make this into a cushion and how to lay it out so that these two pieces will eventually become a cushion and then marked up for quilting. Now, right from the start, the disclaimer here is that I'm no expert at this. I love hand stitching, I love machine stitch, I love fabric of any sort, and I really, really enjoy making projects like these. But I'm not offering this up as the only way to do it or the expert way to do it, definitely not. Um, it's just uh, an indication to you guys to, to be creative, to take up uh, your needles and threads and to stitch two pieces of fabric together. And so if any of this is helpful, then that's brilliant. But if any of this is contrary to what you like to do or, or what you've seen elsewhere, that's fine too. Uh, there's loads of tutorials all over YouTube about how to do this and so I'm just offering what my take on how I like to do this. I get the results that I get and maybe um, you would enjoy doing this too but I'm definitely not right, I'm definitely not wrong. It's just the way I do it here at the Last Homely House. There's the, there's the disclaimer. Um, I, I, actually, just to go on about that a little bit more, it's really interesting, isn't it? How many ways there are up the mountain. We all end up with a piece of something at the end of it, but there are so many different ways of doing this. And I think we should celebrate them all instead of um, criticising one way or applauding another way. Let's look at them all and choose from that the things that we want to do. That's how I've arrived at this point here. I've arrived at it by looking at lots of other examples, trying it out for myself, getting it wrong, getting it right. Anyway, that's what I um, offer to you today. So this piece then, they still have their papers in and today I'll be taking the papers out, but very importantly, I'll be dealing with the edges. Now, let's have a look at the anatomy of a piece of hexagon um, piecing. When you've decided how big you want your piece to be, whether it's as big as this piece behind me or whether it's a small cushion like this one, then we have to work out how we're going to deal with the edges. One set of edges will be uh, a little zigzag like that, where these sides of the hexagons come together. And one set of edges will be half a hexagon sticking out like so. Now, I've got my big ruler and I hope you can see this in this little overhead shot that I've got here. Before I even take the papers out, because the papers keep the integrity of the piece and that's really important. We need to keep uh, these edges uh, around the loose edges. We need to keep the integrity of those until we're ready to sew them to a piece of fabric. So the decision then is where to um, attach your next piece of fabric or make your seam. So I've decided that I'm going to go right through the middle of these hexagons here, which means that I'll almost, they'll look like this. I'll just fold those down quickly. 
Now I'm not going to cut any fabric, not at all. But you can see now, can't you, that if I fold that edge down, I've got a straight edge there. This edge is different because it's got this zigzaggy wavy edge here. And with this one, what I've decided to do, I'm going to attach my fabric halfway across the hexagons here so that what you end up with is half a hexagon here. All will become apparent when I start stitching this together. I'm going to treat these two pieces as if they actually wear a quilt. I'm going to quilt them. And so I've got some more of the backing fabric that I used on Agnes's quilt, which is just beautiful. K Facet uh, Millefiori, beautiful fabric. And then I've also got some plain white fabric. You won't see the back of this quilt. These pieces here are for the back of the cushion, not for the back of the quilt. So this white fabric here is going to be the back of the cushion. And I like to make, there's several ways of making a cushion. I like to make, my, my, make mine with an envelope back. So it's very easy to get the cushion in and out. It's very easy to construct. Uh, you, you really just need two lines of sewing top and bottom. So we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We'll get to that bit a bit later. For now, though, what I need to do is cut the size pieces I need of this stuff and attach it to these two ends here on the blue one and the green one. And I'm going to be making um, the opened out cushion. We'll do that now. So the papers are out now and what uh, what I'm going to do now is lay out this green one. I've laid out the blue one already. So in this, um, so here then I've attached these two pieces of fabric here and I've made my quilt sandwich and pinned it all together. So I'm going to show you exactly how I did that on the blue one with the green one. Okay, so that's ready now to mark out and quilt, which is exciting. Okay. Now, once all the papers are out and the edges are a little bit loose, what we need to do is make sure that those edges won't come to unravel. It, I'm making a big deal out of this. It's not that big a problem. And here I've left a paper in and I need my glasses on when I take it out. Let's get that last one out there. So if you run your hands over them, the hexagons, you can feel if there are any papers left in there. That's not what we want at all. Now I'm going to attach the two sides of this cushion to the hexagons that are the zigzaggy way, this way on. And I'm going to leave these edges here to sew together when I assemble the cushion at the end. So that's not going to be for quite a while. And so the way that I'm doing this to make sure that I, I really want to make sure I go exactly through the middle of this hexagon, not lower or higher, but right through the middle. And the way that I'm doing that uh, the way I've, I've decided to do it. I'm just taking a hexagon here, folding it exactly in half, and then with my pen, I'm just drawing exactly where that halfway mark is. 
there on a couple of hexagons I'm going to do that so let's do it on this one fold the hexagon in half exactly in half and then draw where the line is and put one towards the top and one towards the bottom can you see all right let me move it this way a little bit further so I've I've drawn a line across the middle of the hexagon there and another one there and then what I need is my ruler which is here and I'm going to lay my first piece of fabric here and then if I tweak that out and put that on top like so and that one on top like so then I can draw a line now normally I would draw this with a um, a fabric marking pen but I don't need to do that I'm just going to draw my line with a pen doesn't matter about this you're not going to see it and now I'm going to pin in several places so that this doesn't move when I carry it across to the sewing machine and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and then machine stitch along my line so I'll go and do that. So I've given it a lovely press now and you can see that I've gone right through the middle of these side hexagons here. I've taken the papers out of these ones and we'll deal with those when we're constructing the cushion. But what I'm going to do now is pin this out as if it was a uh, pinning out a quilt. Uh, before I do that though, uh, here I've got just an ordinary piece of uh, white, um, white cotton and then the, the batting I'm using, the wadding I'm using, was actually pieced together from a few different pieces. It's great to use up your scraps of wadding this way because, um, you know, we've all got them, haven't we? Loads of little bits of wadding hanging around and so, and you know how to, I haven't got any of that tape. Uh, that you join wadding um, together with but actually it's perfectly okay just to sit here for a moment and do uh, a bit of a uh, sort of joining stitch so long as we don't overlap those pieces there. Once this is all pinned out and then quilted it'll be uh, perfectly um, fine. You will never know that it wasn't one piece of, of wadding. So I've got my quilting pins here and what I've decided to do is do the quilting pattern on here, but I'm also going to do it onto the back of the of the cushion as well, so that you'll be able to see what the stitches look like uh, on the uh, on the side pieces too. So that's all I'm going to do now. Then is just do that quilter smoosh, make sure it's all smooshed out beautifully, and pin. And it doesn't matter where I pin because as I do the quilting. I can just remove the pins as I get to them. I'm not quilting this by machine, I'm doing it by hand and so that means that um, it's really easy to remove the pins and I'm putting extra pins in the edges here just to keep everybody happy. I mean I think I keep going on about keeping the integrity of the fabric. I'm not going to start waving this around like a, uh, a flag on a flagpole. It's going to stay yeah, folded up when I'm not working on it or it's going to stay fairly well pinned out here. So I might have laboured that point quite a bit there. But the edges are going to have a full complement of pins and then just a few. I think the general rule is at about a hand's width apart, isn't it? OK, let's do that then. Thank you. 
it's a little while later now. In fact, it's the next day. And I carried on and did the quilting stitches on these two samples. And I've got a little bit of film here of me doing that quilting. But I want to talk to you about the two styles that I decided to do. Now, this is a ruler that's got semicircular markings on. One of the, the quilt designs I really like is called Baptist Fan. And when I was starting to think about how to quilt this um, quilt behind me here, I thought a Baptist fan might be quite nice. And, and actually, I did a poll with my patrons and I said, uh, I'll just draw around a dinner plate. And there was quite a lot of, oh, no, don't do that, Kate, because you can get it badly wrong. And you're right, I can get it badly wrong. So I bought this semicircular ruler. Uh, it's not actually a Baptist fan ruler. It's just, uh, but it works fine for that. It's it's for doing circles so that you could, there's a quarter circle there and you can just keep going around and doing circles. So on the green one, I decided I would use that design. Now, the interesting thing about this, I've got lots of beautiful colours of Aurifil thread. Really, really beautiful. And um, I chose greens for this one and blues for the blue one. You can't actually see the quilting stitches at all, unless you get really close up. But on the back of the cushion, because I've trimmed it down a bit now, you can see the stitches really clearly. So I marked out the semicircles. No, they're not. They're quarter circles, aren't they? Uh, on the front of this. And I was using this water soluble marker and it was great, but the water soluble marker is pretty much the same colour as the fabric that I was stitching into. So I, I found it really quite difficult to, to um, I had to go over it two or three times. Uh, but I managed because, uh, as you can see from the back of the quilt, I managed to do it fine, back of the cushion. And on this side, um, you can see the quilting, but not brilliantly well. I enjoyed doing that one. I like how it looks, sort of, you know, sort of looks. But then the other quilt pattern that I decided to use just needed a straight ruler. And with this one, again, we'll look at it on the back. So with this one, I quilted this one uh, in a grid pattern. And the way that I spaced out the grid stitching I went through the middle, let's see if you can see, I went I went through the middle of that hexagon there and the middle of that hexagon there and these end up being about an inch and three quarters apart on these inch hexagons and I just carried on with that onto the what's going to be the back of the cushion. Now two very very different quilting patterns then, let's look at them both side by side. This was the whole reason for making these samples. I wonder which one you like best. In doing them, I've made my decision about which one to use on Agnes's quilt. I wonder if you can guess. In the next video, no, 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 <laughs> I'll tell you which one I've decided to use because that's mean. I'm going to do the grid. I'm going to do the grid on Agnes's quilt. The quilt lines are quite close together. I like that. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work. I also like that because I like doing quite a lot of work. If we look at the back of this one, this is lovely too, but it was a tiny bit more fiddly to sew. And although it's like um, 49.51, it's definitely 51 in favour of the of the grid stitch. So I'm going to do a grid stitch on this um, quilt behind me here. But first of all, we need to finish these cushions. Because one of the reasons for making this video was to talk about how we deal with the edges. So with the edges of the of these hexagons here, I showed you how I sewed through the middle of that space there. And what I want to show you carefully here is how I've 
opened up, papers are all out of course, and I've opened up this bit of the hexagon here. This bit's fine because I'm going to just sew all the way through there and then taking out the seam from the top of this hexagon here means that I've got a continuous edge to stitch along all the way along there. Same on the other side. Now the way that this cushion is constructed, first thing I have to do is neaten off the two edges. So I'm going to put um, almost like a, 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 I'll make a binding tape out of this fabric and um, put it on the edge. I'll do that next. But then we will be folding this edge in here and this edge in here. really carefully and then I'm going to sew along this edge here. Now there's a lot of layers there to sew through so what I'm going to do is actually trim the batting away so that uh, right up to the edge there so that that batting doesn't form an extra layer that's going to be troublesome. So I'm going to first thing I'm going to do now then is put the binding I'm going to put the uh, make a couple of strips of binding to put on the edges here on both the blue one and the green one and as soon as I've done that I'll get back to you and I'll show you how I'm going to very carefully pin out the cushion so that it um, it works really well. I want to be really quite careful with this and then those cushions will be finished and it will be a question of taking this down and making a start on this. It's exciting! from these edges here as near as I can to where I want to stitch. Now when you're making a cushion like this one which is a an envelope back cushion the the, the piece here measure this and then these two pieces here should be two-thirds of the centre bit here. That's my rule of thumb and so if whatever this is this is two-thirds of it here. The finished size make it a little bit bigger so that you can put the um, the binding on the, on the end here. Now it's really important to get this crease in the right place so I'm going to fold this edge over here and just make sure that it's not a bit of the backing on the front and a bit of the front on the back. I'll just check that that's about right. Now the way that I am going to do this because I, I want to make sure that I stitch right through the centre of that hexagon and right onto the top of where I folded out that hexagon, top of that one, folded out that one. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to mark with my pen where the top of that hexagon is there. And then I'm just going to peek here and see where the top of it is there. Because I just want to catch the top of that one. I mean, you could just whiz along this, but you wouldn't be able to accurately um, catch in the bits of fabric you want to. And I want to make a really neat job of this. So I'm going to pin all of those like so. I'm going to pin them now. And the reason why you have a three quarter, a, a two thirds and a two thirds is so that you've got a nice overlap. Now I'll just pin the same edge on the other side. Just check that that's absolutely in the right place. Now I'm going to mark this one. So that's the top of that one there. And then the edge of that one. And cutting out the wadding like I have is a really good idea because it would make this seem incredibly bulky.
And so I'm going to do that on both sides. Make sure that that's correct. You can feel it. Uh, there we go. I can feel where that is. But now I want to put this one underneath here. And you can see I've got all of that overlap so that when the cushion pads in here, it won't gape. And now I'm going to just check that I've got these last few in the right places here. And when you're stitching this together, uh, on this part and this part where the two um, fabrics overlap just do a, um, a reinforcing stitch there and there because that's a bit of the cushion that gets quite a bit of tug when you're putting the cushion pad in so I'm going to do the same on this last bit here and then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and then I'm coming to the first of the um, reinforcing places Go backwards and forwards once. And you keep kind of keep your fingers crossed that you've got you've got it marked out well. Reinforce that one as well. And then back down the other side. Now, it would be brilliant if I had an overlocker to neaten these edges off. And shall I tell you the truth? I have got an overlocker. It's sitting in a cupboard upstairs. I think I need to get that overlocker out. I don't use it often enough. And so if I'm going to do more things like this, I need to get my overlocker out, don't I? I think um, we call it an overlocker in the UK, but I think some people call it a serger. And it's that machine that um, would cut off and neaten this edge and give you a really beautiful finished edge. The inside of all your clothes are all done on an overlocker or a serger. And I've got one. I've got a really nice one upstairs. I must get it out. And I can already feel that that's much less bulky. If I'd left the wadding in there, that would have been a really, really hard seam to, uh, to turn inside out. I'm going to clip the corner off so that I can poke the corners out neatly. And then I'm just going to trim, I don't know, quarter, half an inch along here. And then snip that corner as well. Same on the other side. And then we have our fingers crossed <laughs> that I've done this, the stitching correctly. And that this cushion's going to look okay when I turn it the other way around. Okay, trim the corner. Here we go. So poke that corner out there. It's a really quick and easy way to make a cushion and it's my favourite way. I think many months ago I made a video about zips and how I don't like zips. <laughs> I really don't like zips. This is a much easier way for me to do this. Okay, so I'm hoping that I can show you some very neat edges here. I'll give that a little press, but for now, yes, I think I've managed to catch the tops of all of these whole hexagons here, go through the halves, the tops, the halves, the tops. Yeah, that's worked on that side and there's a little trim there. I'll actually thread my needle up and poke that back in again because otherwise that will come unraveled and that I think is um, that's exactly how I wanted it to be. So that's a finish on the cushions because I finished the blue one as well. Let me show you. So now that I've finished these and I've decided to do this quilting pattern let's get Agnes's quilt off the board. Oh I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. And so it begins. I'm going to start in the middle and stitch my way along and then turn it round and stitch the other way. So let's make a start. Thank you. 
So there's the first few stitches into this quilt that's taken me nearly three years to finish. And this has been quite an epic video with lots and lots of different stages. I hope you've enjoyed all the explanations of how to deal with the edges and uh, how to construct those cushions. I've really enjoyed making this video. And so I'll leave a playlist of all the, um, the videos that I've made about Agnes's quilt and hexagon piecing. I'll leave that on the end card. And so if you've enjoyed this video, when you give it a thumbs up, that means it gets pushed out to more people who might enjoy it. And subscribe if you haven't already and click the notifications bell so that you'll never miss when I post a video. There's quite a lot of behind the scenes stuff over on Patreon and I really enjoy making extra content for, for, for my patrons who are the wonderful people who support me here at The Last Homely House. So you may want to go and check out what they're doing as well. Thanks so much for joining me on this epic English paper piecing journey. And I'll see you next time with something else. <laughs>